everyone guys, my name is Corey from designsbyfr.com and today we have the PUBG PC, we have actually sold it. So this video is more to show the new owner how to maintain and manage this system and what to look for and if they want to install their own drives, how to do that and how to also fill and drain the loop. So if you guys are interested in diving deeper into this PC and seeing how everything works, then consider sticking around and checking out this video and consider subscribing as well guys it really helps us out now i've done lots of videos like this but i normally leave them unlisted just for the owner themselves however i feel like this might be able to help a lot of people out there wanting to sort of know how a lot of our custom pcs work uh, one more thing to mention guys, I am in the garage at the moment, so I do apologize for any echo or any background noise. It is also peak hour and there is a main road right behind us. So you may hear a few cars in the background. I will try my best to try and eliminate all of that. So to begin with, we do have the tree made of balsa wood. Now this is a bit fragile. I do have a loose branch up here, which I will fix before this is all sent out. Now this video is also to sort of show that the build is in good working condition before I send it out. Is It acts as say an insurance policy for me because I have been done before where the buyer has said that the PC is completely destroyed and basically contacted PayPal, got their money back and I'm left out of pocket about five grand so this has happened before and I don't want that to happen again so I am doing this for insurance purposes as well as to show the buyer how to actually maintain the system back to the tree it's made out of balsa wood very light the way this is installed is the back end has no branches on it it goes up against there and there is one branch sticking out right here which just goes over this little lip here and helps it sit in place makes it nice and easy to take apart if the PC needs to be transported, which is exactly what's going to be happening here. So during transport, this is plaster. It is painted plaster. It is certainly going to get just a couple of chips, maybe around the edges, just from a bit of bumping and shaking. That is no issue. We did find a really good paint that fixes this. So for about $2 from Bunnings, you go to their paint section and in the art section, you go for a burnt umber, grab a small paintbrush and just dab it over those parts that have the paint sort of chipped off a tiny bit and that fixes it right up. You can't even see that I've put any of that on there. It blends in so well. So I'd certainly go for some of that. I've also freshened up the paint job on here a bit as well. So you might see it looking a lot more vibrant and a lot fresher. I put a bit of green scatter over it just to freshen that up as well and cleaned it up a bit for you as well. I want it to look as brand new as I possibly can for you, especially since you are paying a big amount for something like this. And I'm sure you are expecting a quality product as well. So that is the least that I could do. So coming around to the front, we do have the motherboard. We've got your 16 gigs of RAM, which is installed. We have your CPU, the water block, and the motherboard itself. This is a brand new motherboard, exactly the same as before, but a brand new one. Unfortunately, the other one did die. So we got you a brand new one, and I'm also going to be turning this PC on and making sure that everything works before it gets sent out. Now, if you did indeed want to change out any hardware, in this system, it is very simple. This roof simply lifts up like so, and then you have access to the whole motherboard. Put your screw in here, undo those bottom screws, couple of screws up here, and then lift your motherboard out. Very, very simple. Then just once that's done, there's a little acrylic lip here, holds this thing in place. So you'll push that back in like so, and it'll just rest on the top there. So if you did want to install another hard drive, you just simply connect your SATA port through there, like I have with the SSD. You do have a lot of loot, barrels and everything scattered throughout the build, some little t-shirts, a couple of shirts on top as well. So these are free moving, they're not actually sticky tape down or anything like that. So you are free to move them wherever you want. You don't have to have them in the garage. You can put them on top of the building if you wish, like right up top here or wherever you want so that is completely up to you around the side here we also still have the pan with the table so that is completely up to you where you want to put it we've just left it inside the building uh, we think it really suits it there and of course we do have our little cartoon photo at the back there 
Now the car down here is also free moving to a certain extent. It does have two wires going out which is powering a motor to spin this wheel. So you can move it a tiny bit, but just be careful with how much you move it because you don't want to pull that motor off. If you did want to turn this motor off, simply unplug the Molex around the backside. I'll show you that in a second. So the back end of this is probably where most of your maintenance is going to be. We do have airflow through here, bringing air up into the radiator, and then the radiator has all of this little bits around here to escape all of that hot air. Now, hot air does rise, so that's why we have left all of that out, so that the hot air from the CPU can get out. Now, this is removable as well, so you have full access to the back there, and I have this left open because I'm also going to show you how to fill and drain your reservoir. So I've got the 24 pin all set. Now the GPU and the motherboard cable, they've been zip tied down, so that's nice and cable managed. I've also left your SATA power unmanaged because just in case you wanna add a hard drive, I want you to be able to pull that out nice and easy. The rest is all zip tied, nice and tidy as you can see right here. So it's only this cable left, which I will soon zip tie after I've finished all of this and then connected it onto there. I will also be giving you this so you are able to fill and drain your system with ease. Now it is up to you if you put that back piece on top of here to hide all those cables. I'll leave that in your capable hands, but you can leave it off if you want even better airflow. That's completely up to you, but with it on, there's still enough surrounding area that's nice and open for you to obviously run the system nice and cool. So if you ever wanted to take the radiator out, you just have to unplug the fittings, and then there is some thumb screws right down below, one here one in the middle and one at the end. You undo those, this back piece will come off, then just get a little screwdriver in there and you'll be able to undo this radiator on the bottom. Your fans are also on the bottom as well. The GPU is mounted up here with one thumb screw, so if you ever wanna take that off, just undo that thumb screw and that will come off. So I might fill the build and show you how to do it because I will be shipping this system without the fluid in it because I want to make sure it arrives nice and safe and I don't want the fluid getting over any components in case there are some knocks and bumps during postage. So to begin with, you do have a free port up the top. You want to make sure that that is open. Once it's open, just find a way to fill it with water. I'm using this large syringe and I'll be slowly filling it almost to the top. I'm also serving this as a purpose to clean out the rest of the fluid that's been in it. Dual purpose video, very handy. Now you can use distilled water if you like, but I would recommend adding a anti-biocide agent. Uh, you can get them from say, Mayhem's or Primo Chill. Uh, I'll actually leave that in the description for you, the exact name, maybe a link to it as well if you want to purchase that. If you don't want to use distilled water and you want to use a premix fluid, by all means, you can do that. So once you've filled the reservoir to the top, I'm going to put the cap back on just in case. Normally the water won't spurt out, but I always like taking the precautions. I'm going to put the cap on just in case. Now I've got the 24 pin with this Little device here, basically it bridges the connection and allows for power without actually powering the motherboard up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch on the power and I'm going to let the water go down, not all the way down, but maybe to about this ring here. So now that water's gone down again, we're going to fill it back up to the top, let that run down, and then we will turn the power on once more and let that run through. So now that all of that liquid's mixed in, you can see that it has turned purple. That's just mixed with all of the other coolant that was left in there. So we're gonna try and drain that out and make this all clear for you so that when you add your brand new liquid, it will come out the color that you want. So we'll do that part off camera, but for now, I'm going to put the cap back on and we're actually going to fire up this system to show you that it actually works. One more thing before we do fire it up, I just wanted to show you that the car is still working as well. So the Molex connection plugs in like so. This is all gonna be hidden underneath. Then I'll bring you around to the car so you can see the car is there. And then I will turn the power on.
And there you can see the wheel was spinning. All right, so let's actually grab a monitor, keyboard and mouse, and we'll get this thing fired up. I'll install Windows and I'll show you it fully functional. So I have installed some GPU drivers. This PC is all up and running now. Uh, what I wanted to alert his attention to was that I've installed a small latching switch down the bottom. This is your power button. You can feel free to take that out and place it wherever you want, or you can just keep it behind the garage like I normally did in my PC build. Press that once, it will power on. You can see that there are LEDs throughout the build. Feel free to paint over them if you wish, or you can leave them. Uh, the motherboard has them set like that. You can also download download the motherboard software and change the LEDs to whatever color you want. The RAM LEDs are obviously white and we have painted over them, so there's only tiny bits showing through there. In the night, these LEDs will stick out even more. So that is your power button. Down underneath the garage, you'll see that latching switch there once you receive the PC. So let me bring your attention down to the screen. You can see that we are booted into Windows. This is a fully functional PC. It's all operating nicely. And I might actually bring you guys to the BIOS and we'll have a look at the CPU temperatures to show you guys that it's working nice and fine. So as you guys can see there, we have 37 degrees Celsius, 96 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, that is actually really good considering it is a 35 degree day. So the ambient temperature is 35 degrees, which means that the liquid cannot possibly be cooled under 35 degrees unless we actually add refrigeration to it. By using air, it is using the ambient temperature around, which means it can only go to 35 degrees or higher. So 36, 37 degrees for the CPU temperature, pretty good considering it is a 35 degree day. So that'll do it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed, remember to leave a like, comment down below. Uh, if you want to see more of these videos, I'm happy to do them. Normally, I do keep them unlisted just for the owner to receive this video, just to help them out here and there if they want to maintain their PC and you know fill it up with liquid or anything like that. One more thing I forgot to mention is at the back there is a valve system. It is very simple. I'll also leave a link down below to a video that shows you how to use it. You simply undo the fitting at the end of the nozzle, you turn the handle and the liquid will start coming out. Make sure you undo that free port that I sh filled the build with and then the liquid will just come rushing out. Make sure you've got a bucket or something there to catch the water as well because you don't want it running out throughout the system. And guys, if this was useful for any of you who did watch the video, then leave a comment down below. I'd certainly like to hear your feedback, see if you did enjoy this video. We have plenty of other videos on the channel, lots of custom PCs, reviews, modding tutorials, and water cooling tutorials. So consider looking at them if you did enjoy this one. Anyway guys, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you all in the next video.